Now I'm going to walk you through a simple project. To get started, you're going to take your, sh your shed stick and what you're going to do is take it under your warp and then over, under, over, until you reach the end. So what this does, it makes it really quick for you to build blocks of weave because when you get ready to go from right to left, you just lift it up and you pass your, your uh, yarn under it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my shuttle stick and start building on top of what we have existing here. Now if you notice, this here is your warp thread that goes vertical and then your, your weaving yarn is always gonna be horizontal. Now you can do all kinds of different techniques and sometimes your yarn will end up going diagonally or in a circle, but you're always gonna start it from going horizontal and just build on top. So to start building a weave, what you're gonna do is go ahead and lift up your shed stick, take your, your loaded shuttle and you're gonna pass it right through making sure that you leave a tail at the end so that when you get finished you can tuck it in. You lay that down and then you're going to go ahead and take your weaving comb and pat it down. Okay, now once you're patted down you can go ahead and start going the other way. Now when you go back the other way because your shed stick is woven you're going to want to physically or manually weave under and over in the opposite way. So if you see here, the, the yarn is underneath this thread, and I'm going to pass my shuttle over it, making sure it's going the opposite way than we went. Before. So pay attention and make sure that you're always going the opposite way. Now if you compare it here, you see your yarn is under and your shuttle is over. And just continue like that until the end of the row. And it sometimes does help to use your fingers, so don't be shy. Go ahead and get in there. And then you're just going to go ahead and pull it through. When you get started, it can get a little bit messy, but don't worry about it. It's going to be just fine. So when you pull it through, make sure that you don't pull it too tight. If you pull it tight like this, your weaving is going to start going towards the middle. And that's not really a good thing because it'll become really unstable. So make sure that you leave just a little bit of extra on the end. Like this is okay right here. You can see there's just a tad out and it's not too much, but it will keep it straight. So after you do that, you're gonna go ahead and pat it down. Make sure you do that every row. And then you're gonna just continue, pass it under, lay it down, pull it through gently, and pat it down. And as you can see, I'm leaving a little bit of space here at the bottom. And this just makes it easier at the end when you get ready to remove your weaving from your loom that you won't have a lot of um, really tight spaces because what you're going to do in the end is tie these up. So make sure that you leave, a, you know, maybe an inch, inch and a half at least. Okay, so as you can see when you're done with a couple of rows, your shuttle can get a little tight here. So just go ahead and unweave it a little bit, unwind it a little bit, and then continue. Make sure you're very careful to go the opposite way than your row before, because if you go the same way, it's not like a really big deal, but in the end you'll notice the little gaps where you'll see the white uh, warp thread through. So for a cleaner look you just need to be very careful not to go the wrong way when you're weaving. And this is a really simple technique and it's really really easy. So once you get, like this is one of the most basic weaves. Once you get this down, you can do almost anything. You can make simple patterns, you can make stripes, you could make a, a solid block, you could do whatever you want. <clears throat>
Now with this simple technique, you can do some really interesting things. What I'm gonna show you now is a different basic weave. And all you gotta do is take your shed stick out and you're just gonna weave it a little differently. So now I'm going three and three. Three and three. Okay. And there's gonna be a couple little orphans at the end, but that's no big deal. So you're gonna take this and do exactly the same thing you did before. You're gonna lift it, pass under, lay it down, pull it through, pat it down. Sounds like a lot of steps, but it's really easy, you guys. Once you get the hang of it, you can do this so fast. Okay, and then when you go back, make sure you're going over. Okay, so this gets a little complicated if you have orphans, but you can always look at the top of your shed stick, seeing where the warp threads are, and just make sure you're going over those, okay? Over, and then under three. Over three, under three, and so on. And all this does is just creates a little bit of a different pattern in your weave. And since it's still, you know, a very simple one, you're going to be able to build it really easily. Okay, and you're going to go ahead and pat that down and continue. Okay, so now that you have a little bit of a base here, I'm going to show you how to do the Raya technique. I think I'm saying that right, but it's R-Y-A, and it's just basically making tassels on your tapestry. So, to start, you're going to take your ball of yarn, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to unwind it. It's really easy. You just poke that part out, you untwist it, and there you go. So, you're gonna go ahead and get started by, you're gonna grab a section of this. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna grab a section, and you're gonna take the end here, and I'm just using a little acetate divider um, or sorry, acrylic divider, but you can use cardboard, you can use a backer card, whatever you got laying around. And you're going to start wrapping around your piece until you feel like you've got enough. I need a few tassels, so I'm going to get quite a bit. Do, do, do. Still winding here. Okay, so now once you've got a selection or enough yarn, you're gonna go ahead and trim off one side. You could trim off both sides if you want really small tassels, but I want mine to be a little bit longer. So I'm trimming off the long side. And then you're just gonna have a few strips of yarn here. So you can you can use as many pieces of yarn as you want. The the bigger you want it, just grab more pieces of yarn, okay? So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna take five here. And you're gonna go ahead and fold it in the middle, as close to the middle as you can. You don't have to make it perfect because you're gonna trim it in the end anyhow, okay? And then what you're gonna do is take the middle. Can you see that okay? You're gonna take the middle. You're gonna sit it on the center of two of your warp threads, okay? So the center is here on the center of two yarn thread or warp threads. And you're gonna, what you're gonna do is hold it at the top and then you're gonna go ahead and reach around and pull one your right side through and you're gonna lay that out to the side and go ahead and reach through pull your left side through this side's a little harder for me because I'm right-handed okay so what you're gonna end up with is something like this if you can see your warp threads here you're basically looping around and out so once you've got that you go ahead and grab them you pull it and then you just pull it down like that. And that makes your little tassel. And basically in the end, you're gonna probably go ahead and trim these off, but I'm gonna leave it for now until I fill out the whole row. So I'm gonna show you that one more time. You take five yarns, fold it in the middle. Oops. Fold that in the middle. Set the center on two warp threads and hold it there. And then you're going to take the right side 
and pull it through the center. And you take the left side and pull it through the center. Take both sides to tighten it and pull it down. Okay? Now, this is something that you can do, like I said, with as many threads as you want. Um, you can even take like a really big chunk if you wanted to make a really like big statement tassel. You know, like I'll probably do that in the middle so I can show you later on with a different color. But you can take that big chunk and you can do the same thing. I'll just show you so you see what I mean. It just makes a bit of a different look. It's more of a statement. So you see that? It's got like a bigger a little bulkier texture and it's a really good way to add difference to your weaving. Since everything is so symmetrical, it can kind of add a little pop to your project. Okay, so now we're going to talk about building shapes. As you can see here, I've built in a bit of an angle and a little bit of a point. So the way you do that is basically like the basic weave, but instead of just going all the way across, what you do is you go, <clears throat> you go across, but you leave like a few on the end. So you basically detract each row. So you would go and leave two, and then the next time you'll go and leave four. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. I'm using the chunky yarn, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take the tapestry needle, and I'm gonna loop the chunky yarn onto there. So you just go ahead and thread that in there tie it off. I usually tie a knot because it, this yarn is very thick so it kind of has a tendency to slip. So just go ahead and make sure that you tie it in a double knot. And I'm going to begin from the right side, lifting up my shed, passing it under, pulling it through. The great thing about this chunky yarn is it takes up a lot of space so you can really fill in your tapestry quickly and it's also a nice difference of texture so it adds a little bit more to your piece. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. I'm going to do a few rows just to build up a little bit of height here before I start subtracting. pull it through and you pat it down and you're going to go ahead back through. Now I'm just going to do this a couple times like I said to build a little bit of height. You can do it as, as many times as you want depending on the, side of your, uh, the size of your tapestry. And then I also wanted to point out as I am patting down the chunky yarn you're going to want to use this side of the weaving comb. This side is a little bit more narrow so it's great for the, the thinner thread or thinner yarn. But when you're using the chunky yarn, you're going to want to use this side because it's just easier and it doesn't like get stuck in there. So just a note. <clears throat> OK, now I'm going to go back one more time and then I'll show you on this next row how you start decreasing. The main thing that you want to make sure of is when you do start decreasing that you decrease in regular intervals. What I mean by that is let's let's see now. Oh, let me pat it down. Okay, now, as I'm going back, okay, I'm gonna just leave one extra. So, it may not look like anything yet, but let me go ahead and continue here. So, instead of me going around this one to go back, what I'm gonna do is just skip this one, this thread here, and continue on this way. So that's me decreasing by one. So now that I've decreased by one, I'm going to make sure to do that on each decrease to make sure that it's even. And this just is important to keep your angles even and to keep things neat because once you start decreasing and once you start an angle, if you change your increments, it's going to make it look really crooked. Instead of it being a nice smooth angle, it's going to be like, you know, jagged. So make sure to keep it regular. Now I'm going back again, and I'm going to leave it here. I'm not even going to go over this thread this time, okay? So you can see there I'm coming up through here and not through here. Once again, being careful not to pull it too tight, like I just did. But the good thing is if you pull it too tight, you can always pull it back a little. Just make sure that you don't leave it tight, okay? And now you see how this is bulging just a bit? 
you can go ahead and manually pull that in just a little and keep your edges even. It'll make a big difference with your finished product. Okay, so now I'm going to leave two. I decreased by one here, so I'm going to decrease by one more and come in through here. Okay? Go ahead and pull that through, <clears throat> pat that down, and you can already start to see the angle coming in. As I continue, it'll start to become more apparent. And this is really fun. You can you can make shapes, you can make a triangle, you can make circles, you can make squares, whatever you want. Okay. All right. So I think I messed up a little here, and I went too many back, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull it under one more to keep that even. So now you can see I'm decreasing by one more here and continue weaving. <clears throat> now I'm almost out of thread, I mean yarn, so I'm going to take this as an opportunity to show you guys how you can switch colors or you know add on once you're running out of yarn. So what you're going to do, making sure you leave a tell, you're going to just go ahead and clip that off and cut your yarn off of your uh, tapestry needle. And I'm going to take some more yarn here. Okay, and just going to add it back to the tapestry needle. Oops. And you're going to make sure to retie it in a double knot. Okay, pull it tight, and then you're just going to continue back as if you hadn't stopped at all. So I'm just going to continue back from the right side and weave it on through. Now in the end, I know it looks a little weird with all of these little tails sticking out, but in the end you're going to just go ahead and tuck those behind your tapestry so you don't even have to worry about it. Okay, so make sure to leave a nice tail, <laughs> pat it down, and just continue. Now I'm going to decrease one more. And then you'll just continue that until the end of your <clears throat> until the end of your warp threads here. 